What did they say to me is I have no notion that the Palestinians are telling the truth about how many people are killed. I'm sure innocents have been killed, and it's the price of waging a war. I have no confidence in the number that the Palestinians are using. President Biden casting doubt on the Palestinian death toll is the latest flashpoint in the Gaza crisis and its devastating impact on the Arab and Muslim communities in America. The Council on, Isla on American Islamic Relations, known as CARE, called the remarks shocking and dehumanizing. Dehumanizing. This is how many in the community describe how Palestinian people are treated, even as Israeli airstrikes surge in Gaza, destroying homes and killing dozens at a time. Palestinian Americans and their allies are making a desperate appeal to the world to show empathy for Palestinian lives. The question remains, who is listening? Joining me now is Rami Nash Rani Nash Nashashibi, founding executive director of Inner City Muslim Action Network. He was one of the participants in a meeting Thursday with President Biden, and he was the only Palestinian American in the room. Mr. Nashashibi, thank you so much for being here. Um, I guess I'll start by asking you, before I ask you how that meeting went with President Biden, just what was your kind of visceral reaction when you heard President Biden say he didn't believe Palestinians about the death toll in Gaza? Uh, it was gut-wrenching, quite frankly. Um, and it only, you know, really exacerbated this sense of complete um, alienation, uh, indignation, uh, that so many in the uh, larger American Muslim community and Palestinians especially, um, and those who are just concerned for the sanctity of human life have felt since the uh, brutal attack upon Gaza after this, you know, horrific incident on October 7th. Uh, it only served to underscore what this uh, framework of dehumanization um, has been since those very early hours. Um, which is something I shared directly with the president, our profound concern, disappointment, and heartbreak to hear him uh, echo such sentiments. And what did he have to say to you all in response to that? Well, again, under the you know framework of our conversation, uh, we uh, generally agreed not to uh, <clears throat> report back on the details of what he said. But I will say this, that... As uh, I shared that with him, I also shared very explicitly that some of the talking points by some of the more right-wing elements of the Netanyahu Likud uh, government in his uh, cabinet, such as the Minister of Defense, that days, a uh, few hours before the invasion, um, called not just Hamas, but really all of the Palestinians in Gaza, human animals, and use that as a justification for shutting off all electricity, water, and said they'll be treated accordingly. Um, I, I shared that sentiment alongside the, the hurt, the harm of President Biden citing anxiety or doubt around the death toll um, at a time when uh, people across the globe are seeing bodies after bodies uh, mass graves, churches with uh, people that have been completely eviscerated by uh, crumbling mortar. Um, uh, we shared that very specifically. And I think he received it and acknowledged it in ways that were hopeful um, that we'll see change come out of the White House uh, discourse, because it's not only, we were very clear in saying, we know that this dehumanizing discourse around Palestinians being less than human, or that the sanctity of their life not being as valuable as the sanctity of life of others. Uh, we were very explicit, and I was very explicit as a Palestinian American saying, I fully understood and stood with the president as he communicated uh, unequivocal support and um, empathy for the Israelis and, and, and families, uh, American Jewish families that had loved ones that were either uh, brutally killed or held hostage during that day. We understood that. We completely uh, uh, stood by that and would express the same type of sentiments. However, it was just that much more jolting for a president who does certainly have the capacity to express human empathy, to do so so passionately with one group of people, and then to turn around 
And then uh, at a time where people are grieving the deaths of thousands of babies and children inside this open air prison uh, in one of the most densely concentrated places in the world, uh, and then to uh, question the numbers with no reason to do so. There was no media report on it. There was no independent confirmation. Unfortunately, there have been many invasions in Gaza, and the health ministry inside Gaza has aligned with the United Nations and independent journalists many times. In fact, afterwards, uh, produced a list of each and every one of the names of the 7,000 now plus deaths in Gaza. So there was absolutely no reason to do that, and it just added salt uh, to some very gaping wounds in a community that right now is reeling. I want to read to you um, a little bit of a, a, a piece that was published in The New York Times, written by a clinical psychologist and writer named Hala Alian, who's a Palestinian-American writer. Um, the task of the Palestinian is to be palatable or to be condemned. The task of the Palestinian we've seen in the past two weeks is to audition for empathy and compassion, to prove that we deserve it, to earn it. Um, they're being made to sing for the su their supper of airtime and fair coverage. They're being begging reporters to do the most basic tasks of their job, even in death. They cannot rest. Palestinians are being buried in mass graves or in old graves dug up to make room, and there's still not enough space. Um, I, I want to let you sort of expound on just your feelings on whether or not you feel the empathy of Americans more broadly, not just the president, um, when it comes to Palestinian lives and the occupation. Well, let me say this, that, you know, um, we in this moment, and I was, you know, very attentive to listening to uh, Rabbi Drauss as she was explaining um, the suffering in the Jewish community, something that we are absolutely empathetic to. And I've organized along some extraordinary rabbis here in Chicago and across the country. And absolutely, yeah. as Palestinians, as Muslims, understand suffering. Uh, but yes, Palestinians in this moment, often feel like we have to make these extraordinary cases, uh, especially those in power. And it is and has been absolutely, um, you know, uh, it, comforting for so many to see the risk that thousands upon thousands of students from all backgrounds uh, coming out. We don't see those positions as people articulating vile, hateful, hateful uh, anti-Semitic messages things that we would condemn yeah. and do condemn. We see people sure. that are standing, Jewish, Christian, uh, Muslim, voices of all backgrounds that see human suffering on a scale that is just um, absolutely devastating and standing yeah. with uh, a community in this moment of acknowledging human suffering. And that's at least uh, some modicum of, uh, you know, a relief for us in this, in this moment yeah. of tremendous suffering. Indeed. Um, well, Rami Nashashibi, thank you so much for being here. Um, wishing well to your family, who I know uh, you have as well in the region. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you.